And will this be a, a contested convention? It appears that we're headed that way. I don't see uh, very many options uh, that would go down a different path. In that situation, what will you be considering? What types of rules will you be considering? Because right now the rules say that you have to win at least eight states or eight uh, different districts in order to be considered. And the only person who's done that so far is Donald Trump. Well, and that's a misunderstanding. That rule actually is different than that. That's a vote that needs to be taken at the convention of the delegates. Uh, the requirement is that the uh, candidate must demonstrate the support of eight, the de uh, majority of the delegates from eight states that are permanently seated. So that vote can't even be taken until the convention. So obviously uh, no determination can be made until the convention. So that, that vote that we thought, or that rule that we thought stood is not a rule that actually stands? No, it is a rule that stands, but the rule says specifically that it's a vote of the delegates at the convention oh, to determine the if there's a majority. Voters. Not, a, not a primary vote. It's, the primary votes are not considered. It's the delegates' votes. The delegates have to, can, cannot vote until they're permanently seated, and that's the first action of the but convention. So. Most of the delegates are going to be bound delegates who are required to vote as the voters sent them. I think there's only like 116 unbound delegates. And, Gary, maybe you can weigh in and say whether you think um, things will go, how, how you think things will go on this first vote if most of these delegates are bound. Well, first of all, um, North Dakota is uh, one of the states. There's three states and two, province, two um, territories that have unbound, unbound delegates. Correct. I think there's about 112 of them. And, and North Dakota is one. Our convention is in April uh, 1st, and then that will determine if I'm actually one of the elected delegates that are, that, are, that are elected at the convention. But what happens is, let's say Trump gets to 95 percent or 90 percent or Ted Cruz. What happens is those un unbound delegates have the ability to vote for whatever candidate they want on the first ballot. And that is what could change and give power to those delegates who will be uh, voting on that first ballot. And of course, once you go to the second ballot, if no one wins with 50 percent, which is really majority 50 percent plus one, then it's all bets off. Okay, I understand that these are the rules and that there's all kinds of crazy arcane rules that could be voted on between now and then. But Curly, let me ask you, if Donald Trump heads into the nomination, maybe he's short of the 1237 required, if you give it to someone who has a much lesser percentage of the voters who have actually turned out from these primaries, don't you worry that you are going to just send chaos and anger into the Trump supporters, into the people who feel like their votes don't matter? No, I don't think that's the case once it's, it, you know, if it would just be understood. We have a problem with the media. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cable networks are trying I, to determine I don't, think, I don't think this is a problem with the media. I've heard from a lot of voters <laughs> who say if they feel like their votes got stolen, that they would be very unhappy and very angry. I, I think you're looking at a different situation. I realize these have been the rules, but the last time these rules were put in place was 1976. It's been a long time since then. Yeah, they're still there. Yeah, that's a problem. The, the, uh, the media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination, and that's the, con that's the conflict here. <laughs> we we the feel like we live in a democratic society. What you're telling me is it's not a democratic society, and your votes don't right. necessarily matter because it's a democratic representation, correct? No, that's not what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to say is that there's a, we're just one of the political parties. There's many political parties, but political parties choose their nominee, not the general public, uh, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> then why bother holding the primaries? That's a very good question. Look, I, look oh. Gary, I, 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 I don't know hold on, hold on. you're a Republican. Okay, I, I, no, 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 because a Republican would say that, you know, the, the people, what the people say matters, big government is bad. Now, I would assume that's your view. Well, part of the problem is perception's reality in politics. And so if the Republicans go in and pull some shenanigans, and so you have groups of people who are going to try to take over the Rules Committee, that could totally change everything and mess things up with the delegates and the people across the country will be very frustrated and not vote in the general election this fall for Republican candidates.